Hi everyone, welcome back to our Tippit videos. We'll be going through a series of optimization sessions to explain how you can integrate these into your Chroma 3D workflows. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do sizing optimization, namely cross-section optimization in Chroma 3D. I'll be using this parametric truss example to show you how to do cross-section optimization in Chroma 3D. Here you can see I have created my truss with my upper and lower girders, my verticals as well as my diagonals defined on separate branches in one single list. These are brought into the line to beam component and I'm giving a unique ID to each of my branches, A, B, C, D. We have to define a starting cross section for our optimization procedure. And in this case, I'm using the HEA profiles for my uh, truss. So I've taken from the cross section range selector, the family of HEA profiles. Here we have starting uh, from HEA 100 up to HEA 1000. And the first cross section, which is the smallest one in this case, HEA 100 has been selected and assigned to all of our elements. The sorting procedure of the cross sections is very important for the optimization process because it takes into account the list order of our supplied cross sections. So the default cross section library would basically sort these according to the cross sectional area of each of our cross sections. However, it's also possible to sort them by height or by weight, for example, and this can have varying effects on the result of the optimization process. And I'll be showing you how this impacts the process later on. So we've also basically set our D elements, basically our diagonal elements as truss elements by using the modify element component and setting bending to false. The two uh, endpoints of our truss are supplied as supports and I've set a beam load on the upper girder which is called B uh, which is a uniformly distributed line load on this beam. Everything is gathered in the assemble component and we can already extract the total mass of our structure and perform the initial analysis just to see how our initial structure performs. We can already see the maximum displacement and the deformation energy of the starting structure. If I turn on the model view, I can see my uh, element IDs, oh sorry, my cross-section names in the tags here. As you can see, everything has been defined as HEA100 for now. So let's look into the optimization procedure itself. Here I have the optimized cross-section component. I've taken the model from the assemble model here, and we're now plugging in the entire list of our HEA profiles. So we have 24 cross-sections here. So the optimization cross-section component basically takes into account the load bearing capacity for all of your supplied load cases, and when specified, the maximum displacement of the structure. In the case of beams, where we have here a parametric truss, this is an interactive procedure where the section forces of the defined elements are first determined. It searches with a list of supplied cross sections, in this case, the HEA profiles, and, and basically assigns the first sufficient size in the list. This process is then repeated until there are no changes in the cross section sizes or if the maximum number of design iterations has been reached. And in this case, this is five, which is a default number of iterations. So let's have a look at the results of our, of our optimization by plugging that into the model view. We can already see that our mass has slightly increased and our displacement has also decreased. By plugging into the model view, you can already see our beam sections are slightly larger in our upper and lower girders. 
we have a couple of different parameters that we can also adjust in the optimization procedure. We can use the element IDs to actually assign which of our elements in our model should be optimized. If no elements are designed, assigned, all of our elements inside the structure are potentially optimized depending on the supplied cross-sections. So if I want to restrict the optimization procedure to only for elements A, I can, spec I can basically input this into the element IDs input there. And as you can see, now only the up, uh, lower girder has been optimized. If I also assign B, both the upper and lower girders are now optimized as well. Let's say we want to basically group these elements so that the cross-section after the optimization procedure is only one single cross-section. So I can actually assign, for example, B as a group ID, and now our cross-sections for element IDs B are all the same. We can also specify a utilization or maximum utilization boundary for the optimization procedure. As a default, this is set to 100%, which is namely one in this case. If you wanted to optimize towards 70%, Utilization, you can also plug this in through the input there, for example. And we are also able to set a maximum displacement. This is a global displacement in centimeters. And say I can plug in 0 0.2 if I say that my limitation for my optimization procedure should be 2 millimeters. And as you can see, it's basically optimizing for these limitations. In the last part of the video, I want to now remove all of these inputs from our optimized cross section, and I'm going to change the list of our cross sections and generate our own types of cross sections. Here we might have to recompute so that the uh, algorithm basically uh, recalculates it in case of any errors. And now I'm actually going to use the cross section component to create a list of cross-sections. Here I can basically create a domain with a starting size of 10 centimeters to 100 centimeters here. We have 10 steps which creates then 11 numbers. I'm bringing this into the diameter to create basically 11 cross-sections ranging from 10 centimeters to 100 centimeters. And our thickness is basically a tenth of our diameter. We have to always define a family for the cross sections because the cross section procedure will basically only optimize within the same family. And it's also good to input a name for the cross section procedure so that uh, it's possible to basically define what the cross section is after the optimization process. Once we now have created our list of cross sections, I can basically replace this into this input here. And now you can see we have all our custom cross sections, which we created using the cross section component. What happens if our list is not uh, basically structured from smallest to largest, or smallest cross-sectional area to the largest cross-sectional area. If I flip the domain and set this to 100 to 10, basically the first cross-section that has been assigned is the largest one, in this case, pipe 100 with a diameter of 100. And as I mentioned during the procedure, it basically goes down the list and finds the first sufficient size that meets the utilization and the displacement uh, parameters and if these are already fulfilled then it doesn't basically optimize further and because for this uh, load bearing capacity for all these beams have already been met with the pipe 100 elements there are no longer elements which are being optimized so they're not optimized for all being smaller so make sure to sort your cross-section sizes according to how you want the optimization procedure to run. 
So that's it for this short introduction on optimization and sizing optimization in Karma 3D. Thank you very much.